Hi everybody, welcome to the second lecture in our series on chemistry, chapter one. Chemistry, the study of matter and the changes that it undergoes. Today we're gonna to take a look at these four highlighted topics. Extensive versus intensive properties, physical versus chemical properties, states of matter, and last but not least, classification of matter. Extensive properties, and they depend on the amount of matter that you have. Here I have two pieces of styrofoam. One is small and one is large, so they're different in some way or other. Now these are extensive properties. It depends on the amount of matter that's involved. The volume, well, I could take some water and see what the volume of this one is. Press it down under the water and the water doesn't go up very much. The volume's not that great. Take the bigger piece and we could use water displacement, push it down and the water level goes rises in the beaker. So this has greater volume. What about its mass? Well, have a balance right here. Let me weigh the lightweight one. Not very much. Let me weigh the heavier one. Oh, it is much, much heavier. Okay, so more matter weighs more. Also, weird things like heat, which is not very well understood by many people. But here I have two delicious cups of coffee. They both just came out of the uh, out of the machine, so they're both hot. Well, this is a small cup and this is a large cup. Well, this one has less heat inside of it. The water or the coffee inside of here has less heat than this. If I were to pour this small cup of coffee into, a, say, a bathtub, uh, it wouldn't raise the temperature very much. But if I poured the large cup into a bathtub, it would raise the temperature of the bathtub just a little bit more. So heat actually depends on the amount of substance. So there are extensive properties. The next topic we'll look at uh, is intensive properties. And intensive properties don't depend on the amount. So I have the coffee and they're both freshly brewed so they're pretty close to boiling. If I check the temperature in this one I find that it's 212 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. And if I check the boiling point of the hot coffee in the larger mug I see that it's the same temperature. So the boiling point is the same. It doesn't matter if there's a small amount or a large amount of water. The boiling point of water is always the same. Um, other things, density, if I were to take these two things, and I, I calculated the density of this versus the density of this one. Density equals mass divided by volume. Well, it weighs less, less mass, but it also has less volume, it's smaller. But the density ends up being the same as this one. This has both a larger mass and a larger volume, and they, those two cancel out to bring us to the same density. Another intensive property is the ability can, to conduct electricity or heat. With this apparatus, I can check how water conducts electricity. If I take some iodized salt and I pour it in water like this and I stir it up with a little bit of luck we should find that this does indeed conduct electricity and the light bulb should go on. Yep it does. Now if I take a smaller amount of this water and pour it into a smaller beaker what do you think? It's still going to conduct electricity, right? And so that means that it doesn't matter if there's a large amount or small amount. This is an intensive property. The next thing that we'll look at are physical properties and physical changes. Chemical properties and chemical changes. So the first one is physical properties. They can be observed or measured. For example, melting point or boiling point. So I can take my thermometer and I can observe that the uh, water does boil at 100 degrees Celsius. I can do the same thing with the melting point. I can also observe colors, can't I? This is pink, here's some blue, blue chalk, and here's some red dye. So those are physical properties. Physical changes don't change the molecular structure. So, for example, I can take my little hammer and anvil right here, and I can take my piece of chalk smash it into little tiny bits. The little tiny bits have the same physical properties as the larger, so this has undergone a physical change. Grinding, cutting, melting, boiling, none of those things change the molecular structure of compounds. Chemical reactions refer to what substances react with. For example, metals react with acids, wood reacts with oxygen to burn. What I have right here is a mineral testing kit, and I can take some limestone, 
and put a little drop of acid on the limestone and I hope this shows up but you should be able to see that little bubbles start to form I can see them trust me it's bubbling 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 okay so this rock has a chemical property it reacts with acid now if I take this piece of quartz right here and I put the same acid on there and we sit back and watch for a little while nothing happens it's not reactive so these two rocks have different chemical properties if I take a match I can change the molecular structure of the match you know what the uh, properties of paper are like before and after it's done burning the properties are quite different black and it's not reactive with oxygen anymore and it uh, breaks apart very easily so those are chemical that's a chemical change that just occurred the next thing we want to look at are states of matter solids liquids gases and to a lesser degree plasma this is a quarter and it's um, it's a solid because I can't really change the the volume or the shape of it liquids have a definite volume and a but an indefinite shape so the volume of this uh, red wine vinegar stays the same there's you know if I turn it like this there's no more in there there's no less but it is changing its shape if I take these two syringes try to squeeze the plunger there's only air inside of this one I can squeeze it pretty easily fill it up with water now I can squeeze it and I can't make it move because this water inside of here has a definite volume gases have no definite volume or shape so gases can move around and they don't have a definite volume because I can squeeze them so it's not definite it's not defined the last state of matter that you should know about a little bit is plasma and plasma is interesting because um, it's a situation in which at high temperatures atoms lose their electrons so if you look at this Bunsen burner down in the bottom right corner um, what's happened is usually we have a nucleus with electrons and shells and those electrons in a plasma go all over the place so they're not they don't have allegiance to the nucleus but we won't really cover plasmas too much this year the last thing that we want to take a look at today is the classification of matter mixtures are blends of pure substances things that are mixed together physically but not chemically and they can usually be separated easily there are homogeneous mixtures and there are heterogeneous mixtures all right so I take this Mountain Dew and I open it up and pour it into a glass and look very carefully I can see that it's the same from the bottom to the top it's homogeneous because homo means same so it's the same the first sip mmm it's just as delicious as the very last sip so that is a homogeneous mixture but if I take some hot water and I take some delicious Swiss Miss and I put the Swiss Miss in the hot water and let it sit for a moment or two we can see that there's this heavy sludgy stuff at the bottom and at the top we have the mini marshmallows which I don't think you can see but trust me they're there and in the middle it's kind of uh, you know no person's land in there it's not really thick and gooey like this and it doesn't have the mini marshmallows and froth on top it's you know it's different all the way through so that's why we use the word hetero because hetero means different so this is a heterogeneous mixture so it's not uniform it's not the same throughout so today we covered a lot of ground didn't we we looked at extensive and intensive properties those depend on uh, whether or not there's more matter or less matter we looked at physical properties physical changes chemical properties and chemical changes and we uh, thought about those properties changes how things are changed are they changed chemically for example when ice melts to liquid water they're different in one way but they're not different in that they are both H2O and uh, then we looked at the states of matter solids liquids gas or plasma the difficult thing here is going to be to understand the, the meaning of the word definite volume definite shape or indefinite volume indefinite shape that kind of thing the last thing that we looked at were mixtures blends of substances and there were homogeneous mixtures also known as solutions and heterogeneous mixtures which are different throughout if you have any questions be sure to ask and thank you for watching